turn for today Saturday September 24th 2016 I'm George Favar welcome back to the Jack's Left channel welcome back to another season of History Jacksonville we've entered our fifth year here on History Jacksonville and I'm pleased today in our first episode of History Jacksonville for the 2016 2017 broadcasting season I'm pleased to be here in Murray Hill to be in Cameron Park to be bringing to you today uh, not only pictures and film, but some history about Murray Hill. Murray Hill has celebrated the 100 year anniversary from the time it was actually started out to be incorporated as a town. Now, later it was annexed by Jacksonville. We're gonna talk a lot more about Murray Hill and we're gonna explore Murray Hill and what makes Murray Hill unique. Let's roll it. You can trace the origins of Murray Hill back to the 1880s, developers were trying to uh, build uh, a community called Edgewood. That initial development failed, but later on, after the Great Fire of 1901, people became interested not only in rebuilding the city of Jacksonville, but also in building outside of Jacksonville nearby. And thus, the concept of Murray Hill Heights was born. Around 1906, 1907, the first houses were constructed. And the things that they offered uh, were something unique. Uh, they offered paved roads to get to your house they offered a sewer system, artesian water, in 1916. Right around that point, uh, they were building streetcars out here to get out here from downtown. And so, with all of the growth that was happening, Murray Hill was uniquely positioned due to the proximity of a big facility for a seaboard airline. later on became Seaboard Coastline, a seaboard system, uh, a railroad company. And so uh, with Murray Hill uh, ready for the car, ready for people to, uh, to join the community, the town of Murray Hill was incorporated. Now the town of Murray Hill uh, borrowed a lot of money. Uh, it was created in 1916, incorporated in 1916 and then went broke. Um, they owed hundreds of thousands of dollars. So ultimately, in 1925, Murray Hill was annexed. Now let's take a look at what used to be called Murray Hill Avenue, Edgewood Avenue, and Plymouth Streets. Saturday, September 24th, 2016, a unique intersection here in many ways because we have the railroad tracks We have Edgewood Avenue. Different shops, place to eat.
Edgewood and Post, September 24th, 2016. More different shops in the theater and library are further north on Edgewood. The Murray Hill Theater was built in 1949 and it was first class for its time. Air conditioning, uh, a uh, crying room for uh, mothers to take their infants to, uh, foot back, uh, tilt back seats. Uh, so uh, it was uh, a theater until around the mid 1990s uh, and it has since become a Christian performing uh, arts venue. I'd now like to talk with you briefly about a personal link that I have with Murray Hill. In 1982, my mother was not well. She was a brutal diabetic and she was living at the Plymouth Home for Adults. And I would visit her from time to time every other weekend on the visitation schedule. We would uh, hang around downtown, Hemming Park. She liked to shop downtown back when there were major department stores there. Uh, we would go out to Regency Square Mall. She used the JTA buses exclusively. This is back when the JTA buses uh, were um, used Hemming Park as a, um, as a deployment area for all the different buses. You would just catch a bus uh, in downtown and it could take you all over the city. Um, in, in Hemming Park, right around Hemming Park. Uh, so I got a chance very briefly to experience this community. Perhaps I even played in this park. I know I visited numerous churches in the area. I know that uh, she bought me a turtleneck sweater at a Salvation Army thrift store on Edgewood Avenue. 1982 was so long ago. I was just a seven-year-old kid going to Arlington Heights Elementary, and I would be on these visitation weekends uh, with my mother, and uh, we would sit out on the porch of the group home uh, here on Plymouth Street, and we would uh, wait for the train. The trains would be coming along the track, uh, Amtrak, uh, the freight trains. Uh, it was quite an experience, so you would just, uh, you would hear it coming, uh, and then uh, this is the path that the train, the trains back in uh, 1982, 
uh, that this is the path that they were taking to come into Jacksonville and heading parallel with uh, Roosevelt Boulevard, the uh, the uh, semi-limited access uh, expressway, uh, uh, and uh, so it was something else. But there's something that was so special about those trains, those freight trains especially, because back then they had something called uh, a caboose, a caboose. And here's a, an example of a caboose. And the guy would be standing right there on the, the back of the caboose, and we would wave. Uh, so I remember those things. For those of you who do follow my politics, and you know me personally, uh, family and friends, uh, there is a reason, I believe, that I'm called upon to call for progressive action and progressive change, because I have saw at a very young age the fragility of life, the, the toughness of life, but I've also saw in this community, in the people of this community, this very community in the early 1980s, some caring, some compassion, and some love. And to that, I am eternally grateful, not only to Murray Hill, but also to Jacksonville. She died in 1984. I never had a chance to get to know her very well. The visitations had ended, but um, I think back, and on this very, very, well, warm, somewhat hot day, uh, I'm thankful uh, for what uh, happened in the sense that uh, we had those times to get to know each other. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later. The best is yet to come on the lefttornnetwork.com.